What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video we are jumping into Dawn of DC with Titans issue number one. Now if you kept up with everything that is going on with DC Comics, you will know that the Justice League has been disbanded. In their place, Nightwing and the Titans have taken over. The torch has been passed. Robin, Kid Flash, Wonder Girl, the protégés of the world's greatest superheroes. Together with Cyborg, Raven, Beast Boy, and Starfire. The Teen Titans were the most formidable team of young superheroes the world had ever seen. But now they have grown up. They are breaking out of their mentor shadows and they are becoming what they need to be. They are the premier superhero team in the DCU. And with the defeat of Deathstroke and Pariah now in the distance, the Titans stand ready to protect their planet, to lead the charge in the battle for hope, justice, and peace for all. With writer Tom Taylor, artist Nicola Scott, and colorist Annette Kwok, make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel, make sure that you like this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we dive into it with a murder. We have The Flash, the fastest man alive, but today... He is unable to beat it. The bullet that has already pierced his heart. Now on a normal day, he can outrun a bullet. He can vibrate fast enough for it to pass through him. There have even been times where he ran backwards fast enough, faster than the velocity of the bullet that hit him, so it simply left his body the way it came. But today, he couldn't stop this. He was shot in the back from point-blank range. He knows that he's gonna die in seconds, but for the Flash, there is a lot he can do in seconds. Running home quickly, saying he loves you to his wife and children. That's when he hightails it to the Flash Museum. He runs to the cosmic treadmill. He knows that his fate is sealed, that there is only one option left. He must change fate. As he runs on the cosmic treadmill, we see him disappear, and we pick up with Changeling, aka Beast Boy. We have Raven sitting here with him. As he wakes up from a nightmare, we see that he no longer has the eye patch on. His eye was able to heal during Tales of the Titans issue number 4. But that doesn't stop him from having these nightmares, from changing in his sleep. But as the two of them begin to discuss the day, Beast Boy is excited because today is the day. It's the day that they step up. The world is now relying on them. And so as they get dressed for the day and they begin to head out, we have Nightwing and Donna that are coming to Garth. And Garth has heard what has been going on. Nightwing is taking over for the Justice League. And he believes that together, with Garth by their side, they can make a difference. The oceans obviously being a big part of the world. The Justice League were a team. The Titans. He believes that they are something stronger. And Donna tells Garth that this is what they have been preparing for. Ever since they were little kids. But for Garth. He has no intention of joining their team, because his priority is the ocean, and what has been going on lately, whether it be pollution or anything else. He admires what Nightwing has done in Bloodhaven, but he thinks transforming the world is a much bigger challenge than a city. He also says that he is already working with someone, someone he believes can make a real difference, someone who can do what the Titans simply cannot and that is look after 29% of Earth. Both Donna and Nightwing, they're a little bit confused on what just happened, but with Garth jumping back into the ocean, they head back to Bloodhaven, because today is the grand opening of Titan's Tower in Bloodhaven. The world is watching as they get ready to do what they're gonna do. We do see a great moment between Beast Boy and Raven, and as they prepare to address the world, they don't get the opportunity to do so. Because Oracle chimes in, letting them know that they have an emergency. A Category 5. Transmitting coordinates to Cyborg, he opens up a doorway and they head out. And when they show up, what they have is the super ape known as Titano. 
he is currently attacking a nuclear power plant, seemingly unhinged. If he is to destroy this, it is going to be absolute devastation. And so Beast Boy is the first one to jump into action. Starfire had shown him a kind of former apex predator of Tamaron. This is where Beast Boy transforms into a giant freaking kaiju. And that is where the battle of the monsters begins. As Beast Boy holds off the super ape, we have Cyborg that is going directly into the nuclear reactor. He knows that it must be contained. And so while he works to do this, Raven and all the others, they get the workers out of here. While they are evacuating, this is where the military helicopters begin to fly in. And coming off of the first bird, we have Peacemaker. Now, if you checked out my last video, you know that Peacemaker is now working for Amanda Waller. Or working for her again, I should say. He also helped her get the Helmet of Hate. Immediately, he gives the order to kill the Super Ape. Nightwing, the one to stop him. They say that he is far enough away from this nuclear plant to bring him down. And so Donna and Starfire, they hit him with some heavy blows. They knock him to the ground and they knock him unconscious. We pick up 20 minutes later with the helicopters bringing him out of here. Peacemaker on the phone talking to somebody and he is not happy with the way the conversation is going. He was on the phone with the president. Against his counsel, the president has asked to share some information with the Titans. He lets the Titans know that really unknown forces are attempting to cause enormous ecological damage to the world. They believe that someone weaponized the monkey. And while Peacemaker would want to shut the Titans down, the President of the United States is asking for them to work for him. Work for the US government. And Nightwing's response is no. Peacemaker telling him that this is a one-time offer. That your president is asking you to serve your country. Donna saying that this isn't her country. Starfire saying that this isn't even her world. Raven, she was born in another dimension. And Nightwing goes on to say that is, in his experience, superpowers and nationalism, those are very bad mixes. There is no reason for an antagonism between the two of them. This is when Peacemaker starts to kind of, kind of blow his cover a little bit. Asking Nightwing if you really believe that we're going to allow you to have so much power unchecked, to operate so freely. When Cyborg goes to say something, Peacemaker pretty much tells him to shut up, I don't want to hear it from a supercomputer who could potentially hack our systems. Cyborg making a joke of it, saying that he doesn't have to hack their system. All he has to do is really give a glance their way, and he could see whatever he wants to see. But Nightwing does tell Peacemaker that they're not the Justice League and he is not Batman. There is no reason for the usual secrecy, no reason for any kind of tension. They are happy to share any information that they discover. As they leave, he gets on the phone with Waller, saying that they, they reacted exactly as they had predicted and that they are definitely going to be a problem for them. And so with the Titans returning back to Titans Tower, as they all discuss the living arrangements, saying that Wally West won't be living in the tower along with all the others. He's got a wife, he's got kids, he's got all this stuff going on. But this is when they see a trail of blood going directly into Titan's tower. Our team, they go to track it down. They follow the bloody footprints. And what it leads us to is the death of Wally West. With Wally's body laying dead on the ground, laying in a pool of his own blood, Nightwing tells everybody not to move because this is a crime scene. On the monitors in front of them, the only words that they see is solve it. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I'm not gonna lie, this, this is disappointing. We have seen Wally West really getting the spotlight back. And as soon as he is thrown into the Titans comic, the immediate first thing they do is kill Wally West. Now, obviously, we know this isn't going to last forever. Wally West is headlining the Flash comics. He's got so much other stuff going on. He just had a kid that was born. There's a lot going on with the Flash. So there's no way in hell that they are going to kill him, especially considering they just fixed Heroes in Crisis. It's disappointing to see them turn around and be like, oh, guess what? 
Wally West is dead, but we know he's going to return. This is their way of really kicking off a kind of murder mystery to begin the Titan series. I think there are a thousand different ways they could have done this, but like most stories with DC Comics, they love to take out the Flash first. He is arguably one of the most strongest individuals to ever exist. The idea that Wally West was shot in the back at point-blank range, it doesn't necessarily make sense. Wally West is arguably the fastest speedster to ever exist, and you're gonna tell me that somebody snuck up behind him and shot him in the back with a gun. I just don't believe it. But this does become more believable. You guys gotta check out my next video, which is Batman the Brave and the Bold. Because in that comic, they go on to explain that there are new weapons being created using the Speed Force and Negative Speed Force. So it's possible that somebody shot him with a Speed Force weapon. This would be the only logical conclusion on to why Wally West wasn't able to m move fast enough past the bullet or be able to know the person was coming up on him. But I'm a fan of the Titans. I'm excited to see that they have taken over for the Justice League. It's going to be very interesting to see who is responsible. We can assume that it's got to be one of the killers that Amanda Waller has hired. Because now it is open season on all superheroes. Amanda Waller has gave pardons and clean slates to anybody that is able to kill a superhero. The only question remaining, is this related to that? Is this connected to Amanda Waller? And who would be ballsy enough to try and put a bullet into Wally West? Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to get completely caught up on all Dawn of DC related content, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on with this series. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon, having multiple different tiers, from $1 to $50, from loyalty badges to comics every single month. Not only does this help out the channel tremendously, but you are getting tons of perks in the process. If you are unable to do this, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.